Hello, welcome to my channel, Moving Faster with Parkinson. Today we are going to talk about a very common concern. Um, many times in the clinics, in the clinic patient comes with this concern about do I have Parkinson's disease or do I have essential tremor? Very common concern. Even for the family too, they obviously prefer to have the diagnosis of essential tremor than Parkinson's disease. Um, however, e essential tremor can be very disabled, very disabled, affecting your life significantly to the point that some patients, even up to 50% of them, they don't respond to medications, um, medication that we have available for essential tremors, such as primidone, propanol, don't even touch that tremor. And those patients require more invasive procedures, such as deep brain stimulation and MRI guided ultrasound to improve the quality of life. By the way, essential tremor is the most common type of tremor that we have, uh, by far more common than Parkinson's disease. It is actually estimated that approximately 14% of the population older than 65, they have essential tremor. When you get older, increase even more to the point that approximately 20% of the patient over 90 years old, they have essential tremor. Some patients, they have both essential tremor and tremor predominant Parkinson's disease. There is a probably, because we are not completely sure, but based on epidemiologic studies, people with essential tremor, they are at higher risk to develop tremor predominant Parkinson's disease, approximately four times more likely. Another factor is, is that excessive physiologic tremor sometimes get confused with mild essential tremor. Everybody has a physiologic tremor, which is the postural tremor, okay? The postural tremor, everybody. By the way, <clears throat> um, one epidemiological study showed that approximately 96, 97% of the normal control group, they were, they were able to detect clinically a postural tremor. So it's very common uh, having a physiologic tremor. You know that when you are stressed out physically or emotionally, you will shake when you are going to talk in public. Uh, when you have a problem with somebody, you will shake. You will shake, that's normal. Now, let me help you to differentiate between enhanced or excessive physiologic tremor, which is a normal tremor, that everybody has some type of tremor, and the pathological tremor. Essential tremor is pathological tremor, okay? So I will show you the difference. Number one, the first difference is that in essential tremor, the main component, the main problem is the kinetic tremor. So in tremors, we divide it in two areas or resting, resting tremor or the action tremor. But the action tremor is a little bit more complex because it's divided in kinetic, which is, this is the kinetic tremor, okay? And the postural tremor. This is a postural tremor. This is a postural tremor. This is kinetic tremor. This is kinetic tremor. Kinetic tremor, postural, postural, kinetic tremor. And the resting tremor is when you are standing position or really, really, really at rest, okay? So in essential tremor, the main problem is kinetic, this type of tremor, okay? This type of tremor. I will show you a video later. In excessive physiologic tremor, the problem is postural, mostly postural, and they, they tend to be very symmetric, both hands almost the same. Different from essential tremor, they tend to be one side more than the other one, typically, okay? Also in enhanced physiologic tremor is not going, it's not supposed to affect the neck and it doesn't have what we call the terminal when you are trying to reach the target. For example, the nose, the nose or the fingers get worse that we call that intentional component of the kinetic tremor. The physiologic tremor, you don't see that, okay? Also neck tremor is 
always pathologic, never physiologic. You have a patient with neck tremor, something going on. It's not just having too much uh, uh, um, uh, medication that might exacerbate tremors or, or, or catecholamines uh, uh, in, your, in, your, in your system, uh, too much coffee, no. When you have a head tremor, this is, or is a central tremor, or is most likely the dystonia. Um, it gets more complex. Now, in essential tremor, you have in coordination when you walk. That's how, that's what we what we call gait ataxia, which is in coordination, balance issues when you walk, uh, and you have approximately in fifty percent of the patient you have the terminal tremor or the what we call intentional tremor. Okay, you have that different from enhanced physiologic tremor. <clears throat> now, how do you make the difference between essential tremor and Parkinson's disease? Okay, how you make the difference? So we talk a little bit about essential tremor, but there's few. The main the main factor here is that in Parkinson's disease you need to have a slow movement, and it not just a slow movement. You need to have the decrement, decrement decrement in the amplitude or speed of the movement in order to say that the patient have Parkinsonism, okay? That's important. You do not see that in patient with essential tremor. Sometimes it's very difficult to detect that because the tremors are so severe that the patient cannot do the uh, um, alternated or, or this type of maneuver that we uh, typically uh, performing the clinic to detect bradykinesia or slow movements, okay? Also in essential tremor, patients are not, they don't have a stiffness or rigidity. They do not have a, stiff, a stiffness or rigidity. Different from, from patients with Parkinson's disease, they actually, they have, the majority of them, they have a stiffness, they have rigidity. And it gets worse when you activate the other limb, okay? Initially, in Parkinson's disease, is mostly unilateral, unilateral. In, in ET, most of the time, is bilateral by definition, okay? There, uh, less than 5% of the patient might present unilateral, but all of them will end up having bilateral symptoms. So by definition, is uh, bi bilateral hand tremor, okay? Always involve, in essential tremor always involves the hands. And mostly at this level, at the level of the wrist, okay? In Parkinson's disease, mostly fingers and type of rotatory type of tremor, okay? Rotatory type of tremor. Also, many patients, they have jaw tremor. So uh, in Parkinson's disease, the jaw tremor is when they are relaxed, resting with the jaw closed. Different from patient with essential tremor, which is by definition an action tremor, is when they are talking, you see that they shake their jaw, okay? Another important thing is that approximately 20% of the patient with essential tremor, uh, they might have resting tremor, they might have resting tremor, but it's a late finding and never, never, at least what that's what we think, never involve the leg. Like in this lady that you see the video, you see the right leg resting tremor. This is the best way to see if you have a resting tremor. So the leg is hanging, right? So it's resting. So this lady has a, a, a tremor in the right leg. Most likely she has a tremor predominant Parkinson's disease, okay? Now, I just want you to, to see the video of patient uh, with Parkinson's disease. You see this type of tremor is mostly like a pin rolling type of tremor, mostly affecting the fingers. Okay. And now look this one. It's an action tremor. Patient is doing activities. And this is very common in essential tremor. So this is a patient with essential tremor. This is a patient with Parkinson's disease. Tremors are different, looks different. Look at this tremor here. So this, this patient is having uh, a lot of kinetic tremor. One side more than the other. 
and this is classic for essential training. If you like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. See you soon.